I, I got it out um, when you was moving. <laughs> I was helping you. You didn't know it, and it fell out of the truck. And I said, "I'm gonna keep it, keep it in good." good, good. <laughs> <laughs> for you. Okay. Okay. I see. I see my uncles. What's going on? What's up? Um, Dr. 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 Uh, this Habib. I, I got it <laughs> this is your nephew. That's all. This nephew okay. is my nephew. Didn't know it. Didn't feel like it. Oh, okay. I'm keeping keeping it. I, 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 I was my uh, friend nephew. Hey, okay. No, it's you can push it, you yeah. just yeah. press the link. Walaikum <laughs> salam. That's my sister. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So good to see you. <laughs> Brother Jabbar. Okay. We can't see you though. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Only the host. There's, there's a reason for that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. On memories of how you look. Subhanallah. <laughs> That was a long time ago, brother. Long time ago. Umi, how you doing today? I'm good, son. How are you? I'm good, alhamdulillah. It's good to hear your voice. How's Samia? Alhamdulillah, she's good. She's good, alhamdulillah. Wait, everybody fine? Everybody's fine. The boys are doing their job. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping y'all busy, I know. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Can, can y'all hear me okay? Before I had an echo... Oh, I yeah. think it was the yeah. major. You're good. You're good. Okay. You're good. I can hear you. I'm there. Okay. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. So before we go on air, I just, I just want everybody to know that I'm I'm having surgery to, tomorrow. So, inshallah, mm -hmm. I want everybody to keep me in that dua, inshallah. We'll do it. So, so, so. May Allah make it easy and successful I mean, and painless I mean, and make I mean, the recovery quick. I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean uh, we should pray for you after Wazi for tonight. Sure, sure. Yes. That's that's the I'm gonna leave you for a minute because Halima can't find the link, so I'm gonna send it to her. And then I'll be back. Okay, alhamdulillah. And once we start, we'll, we'll mute all the participants and uh, allow the host and the uh, host uh, and the, our uncles being interviewed to have the floor, inshallah. inshallah. So, yeah. like that, that was that's uh, somebody listening to YouTube in the background that I was hearing. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I muted it. I stopped. Okay, it. okay, okay. I thought it was my computer. I was like, what? <laughs> <You're> <laughs> <gonna speak back. laughs> Frantically, I got the page open. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> <laughs> Imam, how, how's how's my my niece? <laughs> oh man, she's she's busy. She's, she's busy. Really busy, but she's asleep now. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. The boys just went to sleep too. So me, I just put them to sleep. <laughs> All right. Alhamdulillah. How's California? Alhamdulillah, it's uh it's warm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's it's ready for you when you're ready to come visit, Uncle. We're ready okay. to host you out here. I'm going to wait till the fires die down. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably smart. <laughs> right. That's probably smart. That would be a lot. But no, nah, it's good. It's good. It's, um, it's you know, it's different. You know, I'm realizing how, how East Coast I am. But, um, uh, you know, the weather is nice. Um, and I, I think the, the thing about the fires even is... Um, I don't know, man. It's it's just a lot of people stay in their house, I guess. <laughs> you know, it's a <laughs> pandemic. The fires messing with the air quality, you know. But um, but I'm delighted. But it's good. It's good. I'm I'm enjoying it out here so far. I'm in the. We have to come out and visit you too soon, inshallah. Inshallah, come on out. Come on out, I'm ready. I'm <laughs> delighted. <laughs> City Bilal, you think you want to start or we want to wait a couple minutes for? more people to come through. Ready to roll, man. 
Ready to roll? Yeah, you can't ask me that. I want to hear these stories, man. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> I was there a lot. I was there a lot. Yeah. Uh, so every, everything is live, right? Everything is live. I'll be. Everything okay. is live, man. I'm there a lot. Open I'm, up. I'll be in the background, so if you need me, okay. send me a text. Or okay. Oh, what is it saying? I've been signed up to my account. I'm still here. So, okay, cool. Hi. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين انعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد الفاتح لما أغلق والخاتم لما سبق الناس للحق بالحق والهادي إلى صراطك المستقيم وعلى آله حق قدر يوم الدين اللهم صل على سيدنا محمد النبي الأمين was why you had me with the reactive of the bait comes later on the brahim in the kahmid in the jid well i'm not sorry to see the lady so the was some of the hold of the quota in the bill and the other team yeah i'm not sure if we have had a matter well that the team in other attempt at the other i'm a bad i'm the last salam they got to look at to welcome everyone and the la this is our our fifth installment in our in our companions of shake hassan series rather than the animal where we're we're honoring uh some of the pioneers of our of our jama of our community people who were supporters of Sheikh Hassan Sisi rather was Anu during his uh during his life particularly in his his early early years of coming to to the US um and you know we have a couple of goals with this one goal is to sort of give our elders their flowers while they're here <laughs> because that's something that we know is important you know we want to we want to establish that principle and also uh to give us all an opportunity to learn from their stories their history as our jamaat is growing now we have you know people who are who are who are new to the jamaat or even not so new who don't necessarily know some of our elders some of our uncles and aunties who did the work and paid the way for us so once we started hearing stories from people who have been in the community a few years putting in work saying they don't know this person they don't know that person say okay wow this is something we have to rectify <laughs> you know um and then also to document it right to document this history when we read now stories about uh Sheikh Ibrahim Yas radiallahu ta'ala or Sheikh Ahmed Tijani radiallahu ta'ala we read about the their companions we read about the people who are around them who contributed to 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 their work you know who soldiered who introduced people to them who supported them in all these ways um and so this story is going to be written about Sheikh Hassan radiallahu ta'ala and the story is going to be written and is being written now about Sheikh Hassan's work in this part of the world and so a part of that story is the stories of all of the 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 people our elders these these people that we see as extremely big people men and women who who were around Sheikh Hassan who paved the way for us to connect to Sheikh Hassan to know about Sheikh Hassan and so we want to do the work now and it's ongoing work you know but this is our our humble effort to start that process of documenting that history documenting those stories and learning from them inshallah so with that being said uh, uh today's guest uh we actually have two and I, this was my idea I wanted to have a conversation with my my, my two uncles <laughs> at the same time alhamdulillah we have uh Imam Jabal Abdul Rahman and uncle Haji Amin Sharif um these are two brothers who when i first came to the to the tariqa you know not not that long ago really in the grand scheme of things i guess it was about 2006 um these were two brothers who you know i just really liked you know just had a lot of love for and they just showed me a lot of love and um their character their warmth um made me feel comfortable and made me feel at home and then as i got to know them more I got to learn so much about Sheikh Hassan uh from hearing their stories about the time they spent with Sheikh Hassan. So uh we have both of them with us today and uh inshallah ta'ala I, I, I Sidi Bala can we can we make the screen so that you see the two of them as spotlighted or can you only spotlight one at a, at a time? So what I'm looking at is all three of you. Okay. Um I don't know. Okay. And that's what's being shown to uh, uh, YouTube as well. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah, jazakallah khair. So, salam alaikum, welcome, welcome. Oh, alaikum salam. So, what I got? That's my nephew. Alhamdulillah, he's good. <laughs> he's busy. <laughs> busy. And laugh, huh? Busy is good. 
الحمد لله الحمد لله الحمد لله جزاك الله خير الحمد لله so i guess we'll jump right into it um and the first question i always like to ask when we do these sessions is before we start at, you know talking about your your journey to islam and meeting sheikh hassan and all and all of that i like to know where were you both born and and either of you can start <laughs> but where were you born inshallah And where did you grow up? I should say that your boy is the youngest. I let him go first. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, I was I was born in New York City, born in um, in a, a, they call it Roosevelt Island now. Um, at, in those days, in 1950, it was it was um, it was a hospital over there, and they they called it uh, they had another name for the island. And people used to take a bus from Manhattan across to. Uh, Roosevelt Island, and that's why it was called Metropolitan Hospital. That's why I was born mm. in New York City. Mashallah. And what, what year was that? That was 1950. 1950. August. Mm-hmm. Alhamdulillah. Yes. Alhamdulillah. And how do you mean? Where were you born? I, I was born in a little town in North Carolina called Rockingham uh, <clears throat> um, in, in 1945. Mashallah. And, uh, and uh, the house that we still have is the house that uh, it was seven of us, and six of us were was uh, uh, my mother gave birth in in the house, mm. and uh, we still have the house today. And did you grow up down there, or did you come up to to New York? Uh, I I uh, I finished high school there, and uh, I came to New York and. In, in 1965, mm-hmm. and uh, I stayed uh, over 50 years in New York. So I I, um, I kind of hold New York as home also. And how did you both come to Islam? And the, the way I always like to ask this question is, do either of you remember the first time you heard about Islam, even just the word, you know? I remember uh, growing up in the projects in East Harlem, the uh, the people from the Nation of Islam used to walk around and sell Muhammad speaks, and and I used to hear the word a lot, a lot, and when I was when I was like a little teenager, and and younger than that, and so that that um, I was very attracted by them. Um, walking around in the bow ties and suits and everything like that, and I really, uh, I really liked that. And to when I when I became a young person, maybe about 23, 24, I, uh, I, I, because I used to listen to Minister Farrakhan mm. a lot, and um, I said, let me go there and just, you know. What are they? What are they talking about? You know, and um, and that's how I that's how I made my entry into Islam. That was my like introduction to it, mm-hmm. and I, I became a member for about until I realized my mama passed away in 1975, and then um, his son Wadi Muhammad took the reins. Then I started reading more books about Islam and how to do the actual practice of the religion. And, um, you know, I, I knew there had to be more than, than what we was doing in the nation of Islam. There had to be more to the religion than, than what was being done. And so I was happy when we made the transition and learning how to, how to practice the religion. I was very um, satisfied with that. It was difficult for me. It was it was kind of difficult, but I I, uh, I finally grabbed grabbed onto it. How do you mean? How did you come to learn about this this Islam thing? Well, the first time I ever heard anything about uh, Islam it was in 1964 when when uh, uh, our beloved. Uh, uh, beloved Haj uh, Malik uh, Shabazz was murdered, and uh, 
I was working in this this grocery store and most of the people was laughing and laughing and they was happy and I was saying, who is this person? Well, and they said, oh, he's a bad person. You know, they finally killed him. So basically uh, after that, I just forgot all about it. In the, uh, the next year when I came to New York, uh, like, like Brother Jabbar was saying, you know, I, I started seeing brothers with the nation Islam, but I had no intentions uh, in joining the nation, but I liked it, the rhetoric. I would, uh, you know, talk it and, you know, basically that. And, and but in 1966, uh, I, m I met this brother named uh, Skelsey, who was in the nation. And, uh, you know, he started talking to me about, uh, you know, uh, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and, and uh, that part of Islam. And uh, I, I liked it, but I, I couldn't really join it because it was, I knew that I was looking for something different. I, I, was, I was looking for a, a religion that was for all people, not just for black people. Not really knowing that's what I was looking for. Mm. And some years later, Jabbar and, and my and our, my past, we we met we met uh, through this brother, and uh, he witnessed my shahada. Uh, I think it was when was it seventy six or something like that? Right? 75, 76? seventy six or seventy seven. Yeah. Uh, uh, I was I was walking down the street. I had no money. I had all kind of things I had on my mind what I was going to do. And a voice said, "Call me." Uh, by my junior name, Donald. Donald. I'm looking around. Who is just calling me? Because no, I had a street name. Nobody called me Donald. In the street, I had a street name. I looked around and it was Kelsey. He called me, I went over and Jabbar was there. Another brother, Ahmed Miradeen, Zia Shah, and some uh, 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 other uh, Skelsey uh, family members was in the house. And uh, he, he said to me, I have some for you now. I don't think you'll refuse. So I told him, what is it? And he, and he re presented Islam the way that I had been looking for all these years. And I, and I accepted it immediately. And I told him, where do I sign? <laughs> he said, no, 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 go home, take a bath and come back. I, I was right around the corner. So I come back and I took Shahada. And that was in uh, 42 years ago. Allah Akbar. Mm. So I want to ask a question and it's a very open-ended question, um, really just kind of cre to create space for, for, for you all to, to go wherever you want to go with the question. But you both were young men in New York City in the 1960s and 70s, um, you know, involved in, in the community, <laughs> for the like that, or how did you mean you said in the street, you know? Um, what was the sort of impact of Islam's presence just in the community at that time, both in terms of the nation of Islam, Malcolm, like what was, what was the vibe, so to speak, in New York City with regard to how Islam was concerned in that period? I saw it as, it looked like it became a fashion, a fad. It was during my teenage years, I used to, um, when I was younger, my, my my, uh, my parents are from the South. So I used to go down South every year for the summer when I was a little child. <clears throat> and um, by the time I was a teenager and, you know, um, they, they killed Malcolm X, Haj Malik Shabazz, and, um, and um, there was riots going on. And, and I had gotten to the point where I said, 
you know, I said, I'm not gonna allow these people to treat me the way they treated my parents. That really upset me a lot. And it kind of motivated me a little more to join the Nation of Islam because I used to go down south and the way we was treated, it was, it was, and especially a city person going down south and they was calling me a nigga and all kind of stuff like, and I was just a little boy. I mean, I was, I was infuriated. I, I'm, I still haven't gotten over it all of these years, but I've gotten a little, a, a lot better. So I was kind of ripe for joining the Nation Islam or joining the, the Panthers or something, because I was, I was an angry young person. But the, so when, when I came to the Nation of Islam, I felt like my attitude was these people are not gonna treat me like, they're gonna respect me. They, they're gonna respect me, I'm not gonna have it no more with the way they call me nigga, and I can't do this, I can't do that, you can't go here, you can't go there. So Islam for me at that point was, uh, was a, a big change for me and I was, I was happy to make the change. Mm -hmm. Haji, I mean, would you, would you add anything to that in terms of from, from your perspective, what was, the, what was the role of Islam in sort of the community at that time? Well, uh, especially because I, 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 I didn't really know. Just give me a second. I got to plug in. Oh, no problem. Uh, the, the, uh, you still see me? Nope. I just see your hand. Oh, okay. Uh, what about now? Can you see me okay? Now I see. Yep. Yeah. Oh, you sideways. Uh, <laughs> okay. You see me okay? All yeah. right. You all that light, all that glow. Okay. How was it a lot? Too much glow? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's good. Better? Yep. Now I was I was complimenting oh, you, Uncle. Okay. <laughs> oh, my glow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, I saw, I saw because, you know, like, like the brother Jabbar was saying, you know, the condition of, of our communities was, was so that the nation for me was like out champing. They championed the communities. We always knew that if something happened, that they would handled it yeah. and I, I, I huh that's it for sure <laughs> yeah yeah so you know it, the nation and islam at that time became uh, our manhood that's 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 where i put they was they did the things that you know we wouldn't say they would say it the things that we wouldn't do they would do it and they wasn't afraid in anyone. There, there was no fear. So I like that, even though I knew I didn't want to be a part of it, you know. And the brother that I spoke to earlier, Kelsey, it took him 15 years, 14 to 15 years to convince me to come into Islam. He would not give up. So uh, yeah, uh, Islam uh, at that time was very important in the black community long before I knew about anything else. We had, I had gotten involved in the, um, uh, in the business section and uh, I have became partners with um, Brother Skelsey and Ahmed Nuruddin and um, we had, uh, had a, we had basically, we, we had three fast food restaurants in, in Harlem and in the Bronx at the time and we was making some pretty nice money. And that, that was a great experience and training for me, you know? And, um, but I, I knew that there had to be more to the religion than that. And um, I was so happy that we, or the community made the transition to 
a better practicing of, of the religion and becoming part of the world community. So in the 70s, um, after, you know, at this point, both of you are, are, are Muslims and uh, I guess we say in, uh, a part of the Sunnah, right? Was there a particular mosque or community or a set of communities that you that you both would frequent? I used to go to, um, in Manhattan, I used to go to 72nd Street on Riverside Drive a lot. I used to like the uh, cook bars there by Dr. Jabber, I think it was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I used to like the cook bars there a lot. <clears throat> and I was learning more about, about the religion there, just listening to the cook bars and reading some of the books. So I, I was very happy about that. And um, I had a, I had a, uh, a like a, just a, a dream one day while I was working, I used to work in the uh, telephone company and the photography department. I just had, had a little dream and um, I was, uh, I saw, as a matter of fact, Amin was in the dream and I saw a lot of people sitting in a circle and, um, and this, this black guy, he was very black, he had big bright eyes and he had white on and they were singing a song and I was like, I just thought it was kind of strange, you know. I didn't think nothing of it. You know. A year went by. I went to Juma, 72nd Street. I saw two brothers um, that I knew. One was my childhood friend, Rashid and um, Luke Mann. Make a long story short, they said, we're going to visit an African sheikh. I said, can I come? I said, of course. I went. I went downstairs because uh, it was in the basement and immediately the dream came to me. And I said, oh, that's the man I saw in the dream. It was, it was Sheikh Hassan. And I took the Tariqa right away, just like that. And that was my journey learning much more about, about the religion then. And that was back in 1981. Anyway. And what was uh Dr. Jabber? He was at 72nd Street um just before or just after Dr. Guy, I think it's Dr. Guy Guy Dr. Guyver. Dr. Guyver. Yes, so he was, yeah. He was at 72nd Street in the 80s. In the 70s too. 70s. 72. Okay. Yeah, he started in the 70s. Yes. Mm -hmm. sure. Alhamdulillah. And uh how do you mean? Was it was it a particular mosque you used to, to go? Was it was it the same masjid, or did you go to some other? I mean, we, look, we've been best friends since then. So wherever he went, I went. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we, used to, we used to go to Al Falah, which was uh, which was a masjid in Corona. Yes, and, and we used to go there too. But on Fridays, we went to Manhattan because you know we we. We we like the the cookbooks that Dr. Guyver gave. Yes, and uh, plus we was able to uh, interact with a lot of other uh, Muslims that was there because that was the main mosque at that time in Manhattan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. lot. So since uh, uh, you know Jabal, you you already you mentioned the dream so. I, 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 I want to ask if you both could share how it was that you come, came to know about Sheikh Hassan. Well, that's like I said, um, coming to 72nd Street, learning <laughs> more about the religion and listen, listening to the Imam there, um, just made me think more, read more books. And, and uh, like I said, I was just, I was just working in mind of my business in the, in the in the dark room and um and this this i just had this dream I just saw these people sitting in a circle they were singing a song i didn't know what they were saying and this black man with these big white eyes and um like i said in the, the following year at 72nd street again my brother said we're going to meet an african shape i had to ask them can i come because I, I think they was just, just going to walk away. <laughs> and uh, I went with them and, and yeah, you know, I, I said, wow, 
I, I've seen this man before. <laughs> I couldn't, I was, I was really shook up. <laughs> Plus there was, you know, they were saying, they was doing the high la la. I didn't, I didn't know what that was, you know, but uh, it was. Uh, you, said, you said it was a dream, but you, but you were awake, correct? Yeah, it was like a, I don't know, like one of those, uh, when they showed a cartoon with the little circle and when they have, when somebody has a thought or something like that. Yeah, it was, it was like a flash or something like that. Yeah. And who was the brother who said, we're going to go meet an African sheikh? Um, Rashid Ali mm -hmm. and, um, and um, Lukman Abdul Majid. I, I think he's in a nursing home now. And, mm -hmm. and if anyone knows where he is, please let me know. Mm -hmm. And Ali is, uh, he's also missing. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, Ahmed Ali is missing also, yes. That's, that's Chief, correct? Yes, that's Chief. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I, that, this, I, since you said I have to take a moment to mention anybody who's out there listening on the Zoom or the YouTube, you're trying to find our, our, our beloved uncle, elder, Ahmed Ali. I know him as Chief Ali, so we're still putting the word out. Inshallah, we're making dua that we're, we're able to find him, inshallah. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa sallam wa Muhammad. Uh, um, so, how do you mean? I keep wanting to say uncle, but I want to give you <laughs> some respect on your name. But um, when, how did you come to meet Sheikh Hassan? To the same brother who took 15, 14 and 15 years to convince me to come into Islam. Mm. He had went to Istama in Detroit. And he met a brother there named Muhammad Aki. That's what we call him, Muhammad, our brother, Muhammad Aki. And he was boasting about this sheikh, you know. So when the brother came back, when Kelsey came back, uh, he, he changed his name to Muhammad uh, Abdul Karim. When Muhammad came back, he says, this is no, no offense to anyone. I love all my brothers in Islam, but he was saying we have an opportunity to uh, to have someone who is our complexion to uh, to teach us. So he said we all going. I said to myself, Why are you making me go? I don't want to go. I'm tired. I just came home from work. He said we all going, you know. And he had that type of personality. So. Uh, so, so we uh, we went to Tenton Avenue to uh, Ahmed Dempson House, and uh, if I can stop for a minute, I'd like to uh, to say hey to, to my to my nephew uh, Osman Dempson. Inshallah, may Allah give you shifa, and 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 you know, and return you to your good health, even better than before. Inshallah. So. In retrospect to that, I had had a dream like Jabbar. Only, only mine was a dream. His was a vision. Mine was a dream. And I saw Sheikh Ibrahim in the dream. Uh, this is face. And uh, I didn't think much of it, although I remember his face. And when we went to uh, Ahmed Dimson house, may Allah be pleased with him. Amen. He had a picture of Sheikh Ibrahim when you were on the wall. I said, hey, this is the man I saw in the dream. He said, well, his grandson is in the room. So I, I didn't think much of it until I walked in and I saw this beautiful black man with these, these pearl-like eyes <laughs> that all right through me. I said, oh boy, I'm in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> in trouble now. I mean, I knew instantly he knew what was inside. Instantly. Yeah. And, you know, all, even though I tried to build a wall up to, for him not to, to see, he would, uh, he would tear the wall down because I knew that he, he was there, you know, <laughs> to doctor and uh, that was the beginning of my relationship with Shaq Hassan and uh, I think I think a lot for for him you know because he did a lot for us 
in America. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what year that was? Uh, it, it had to be before 1980 because I was a new Shahada. I wasn't even doing all, every, all my prayers was in English. Uh, so I was new into Islam. It had to be 79 or 80, some, somewhere in that, that, that area. But it was, I don't, I don't think it was uh, any later than that. Yeah. And Imam Jabbar, do you, was, was around what year did you meet Sheikh Hassan? Um, 1981. Mm -hmm. I met him in, in 1981. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I came into Tariqa before uh, Jabbar. I used to say, hey, won't you come? He said, man, no, no, he, he didn't want to come. I kept inviting him, but he didn't want to come. Yeah. I was there, yeah. but... <laughs> Would he come? I had so, enough problems. <laughs> when he springboard past, you know, I said, man, <laughs> took it and he ran with it, man. I said, wait for me, bro. leave me behind. <laughs> <laughs> so you both mentioned that part of what if I can say stuck out to you when you heard about Sheikh Hassan was that he was this African Sheikh um, and you know a black African Sheikh so I guess I, I, I have a two part question my first question is can you talk a little bit about the significance of him being a Sheikh from Africa and a little bit about the relationship between the Muslims who were here from Africa and African-American Muslims at that time. Uh, like, like I said early, you know, I love all my, my brothers and sisters in the Dean, you know, and the, what, what I'm saying at that time uh, part of it was not understanding, and and uh, the other part is it may have been nationalistic, but I knew that we needed a Sheikh who looked like us. This was very important to us, you know. Uh, and uh, when, when we met him, and then we found out that he was sent here for us. Mm. That made it even better. You know, so we embraced him and he embraced us. And he never would, he, he was not shy in telling us that he loved us. And- Amazing. Up, up until he died, you know, he, didn't, he, had, he had no problem saying that, that he loved you. And he showed us that he loved us. That was absolutely amazing. You know, I was fascinated. I always wanted to know about Africa. But but Sheikh Hassan, he was so he was so loving, so kind, um, just a for real person. And um, I, mean, I was happy he was black too, believe me. <laughs> uh, but just to know someone which I didn't know many people from Africa. Mm. And when, when um, may Allah be pleased with Ahmed Dempsey also. When we went to his house, because we used to go there to meet Sheikh there up in the Bronx. And uh, little Uthman and um, Ibrahim, they were like, right? They were like little kids. No, but actually when we met Sheikh Hassan, uh, uh, Uthman was walking around in his mother's stomach. Yeah. Wow. Lying a lot. <laughs> well, what happened was, I I used to go up there. You know, I, I used to go up there with with the, with the late Imam Saeed. May Allah be pleased with him also. Well, I mean, and um, she, um, Ahmed Dempson, he took me by the hand and took me in there to meet Sheikh. You know, um, to talk to him. I didn't know what to talk about, so he just asked me, you know, are you all right and everything. And um, then then I then I thought about a problem that I had, and I told him. And he got on the phone right away and solved it just like within about 10 minutes. I couldn't, I was, I was shocked. Then, then, then after that, this, this is the point I want to make is that um, um, we went out, we went outside and it was just me and Sheck and, and he grabbed my hand and we were holding hands walking down and walking down the street in the projects in the Bronx. I was like, wait, wait, you know, 
I was I was shocked because I said, you know, Chef, you know, we usually don't do this in America, <laughs> but but I I felt good about it, and um, I was just amazed how kind he was and how understanding he was of our um, of our plight in in the ghetto. Really, I was just amazed at that. He 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 was really he made you feel like like you was the only person in the world and he paid attention to what you were saying and he just he just made you feel so so good you know so finish telling the story about what he said to you when he told you the story uh Moaz uh, uh in the gym. oh that was another occasion at uh Esau's house oh okay Cece's house you know and um he, I was holding the umbrella for him and it was raining. He was getting ready to go. And he said, Muaz Ibn Jabal. And then he said, don't you know that Muaz Ibn Jabal loved the prophet Muhammad and he loved him? I said, and then he looked at me and he told me that, that I loved the prophet as though he was reading my mind or something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, I was ama amazed by that. I said, nah, I didn't know. I never said nothing like that before. <laughs> but he was like, he was reading my heart. Uh, yeah. And uh, so then, you know, he, he named, then he made a dua for me that the Prophet Sallallahu Salam made for Muaz ibn Jabal. And he did it in front of everybody. And he, he made me clasp his hand in front of everybody. And he made this dua for me. And, uh, and from that day on, I was Muaz Ibn Jabal. Uh, mm. I'm I love that. So you, <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Haji Amin, mean, for, for uh, prompting having brought us this. But this is exactly why I wanted to have you both together because okay. I knew you would remind each other of things. Um, uh, but you actually, um, mention something that I'd like to ask, ask, uh, you know, if, if either or both of you would care to, to share something about what was it like for you both as men, you know, black Muslim men coming from an era where, you know, as, as you both alluded to it, you know, Muslims, especially in the nation, but I would, I would imagine Muslims in general were known to be able to handle things and to, and to be kind of tough, right? What was it like meeting this, this Sheikh, from Africa who's coming telling you he loves you all the time and walking down the street holding your hand in <laughs> France. What what impact did that have on on uh on either or both of you? Well for me uh we uh I mean Imam Saeed may may Allah be pleased with him. I mean he uh, he used to say he became our father. Mm -hmm. So uh, imagine this type of father. You know, it, it it made it made you feel good. You know that that even though you know we was the same age, you know we looked upon him as our spiritual father. And I mean the the impact was unbelievable. You know. Uh, I remember one day, uh, Sheikh Hassan said to me, he said, I mean, if you hold on to this, he said, wherever I go, you go. Isn't that the statement of a father? Mm -hmm. it, it, doesn't a father even want better for, better for his children? Uh, I don't think uh, your two sons, you just want them to be equal with you. You want them to be better than you. For and sure. this, is, this is what this is what Shaq Hassan wanted for us. He, uh, he always wanted better for us. Just like a father. He also, what, 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 I, what I admired about him also, he, he, he wanted us to be ourselves. Don't, you know, you don't, you don't have to fake it. You don't got, just, just, just be yourself and be for real and tell the truth. Yeah. And Although, you know, he, he treated us very nice, like, you know, like we were his children. He knew that we had, we had issues and, um, you know, we was, <laughs> we was kind of raw, 
it was kind of raw and and um and and we we needed help a lot of fighting um, I, I didn't see him as uh i i just saw him as 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 the man that i wanted to be like and who i who, you know who, who i i thought about and uh the the, the tough part was there was there also but he you know he was he was mild with that and very kind and gentle to us so this was a new kind of approach that most of us i mean including myself were not used to we you know i grew up with you know you know they got to scream at you and beat you first and then then you got the message yeah you, know, <laughs> you know what i mean now we were just getting it, you know, nice and easy. Sometimes he would even imitate, he would imitate the way I would talk to, to, to make a joke. You know, I used to say, oh, that was deep, Shake. Then he would look at me and say, yeah, that was deep, man. So I, I don't know if I answered your question. Though. Alhamdulillah, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Thank you for that. Alhamdulillah. Um, yeah, that, yeah, Alhamdulillah. I, I'm, 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 I appreciate both of your answers. <laughs> That was powerful. Um, so another thing I wanted to ask is, who were some of the the people who were around Shake at that time? Um, it, in general, but I'm I, I'm specifically interested in some of the the West African brothers and sisters who were around because I think a lot of us who who came much later don't know some of those names, with the exception of uh, Al Haji Ahmed Dimson, brother I know because we know we know his son well. But who were some of the people, you don't have to limit it to just though, just the African brothers and sisters, but who were some of the people that, you know, may not be around today, or even that may be around today that were that were there at that time around Sheikh Hassan? I like I like um, what Brother Mean said about um, Issa Sisi. He um, you know, he used his his home, his money, his time to facilitate Sheikh Hassan to take care of him. Like, like um, Ahmed Dimson. And then there were, um, the, the Ghana community loved Sheikh Hassan very much. Um, ah, my goodness. Um, Edi yeah, Sam- Akia used to do the, uh, always do the zikr at the, at the Wazifa. Uh, yes. Yes, mother. And Rakia. Uh, yes, yeah, mother. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, you, know, you had. Uh, Abbas. Abbas. Uh, Abbas Kassim. Yes. Who was that last person? You know, Joel? Um, Abu Kassim. He was a taxi driver. Um, he, 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 yes. And he brought his family over here and they used to live up in the projects up there on 45th Street. Right. And he was a hardworking, very nice, very knowledgeable person about the dean. And he loved. Sheikh Hassan, and he always encouraged the Americans like us, you know, um, um, you know, you should really treat this man very nice. He's very special. You know, I know you guys are just learning about him, but where we come from, he's a big, big alum and a big shit, which we were, which we were learning. Yes. We had Imam uh, Yusuf. Imam Yusuf. Yes. Yes. Sal- 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 uh, um, Sal- Su. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and uh, what was the brother used to recite the uh, Wazifa so beautiful? He passed away. Uh, uh, I can't, I can't. He went home. He went home for for Janaza, and he passed away at the Janaza. Uh, I can't think of his name. It's so you know, taxi too. You know, yeah, the uh, it just so many. Uh, supporters of Sheikh Hassan from Ghana, from Senegal, yeah. from from Mauritania, and from Morocco. It is, I mean, I'm so so many. Unfortunately, uh, probably we need Brother Abdul Majid here, mm-hmm. you know, to uh, to uh, give names, you know. But it would. It made you feel so good because, you know, I, we felt at home because it, it, it was Americans and it was Africans, you know, there was whites, you know, there was Arabs, 
everybody was there. It wasn't, so uh, this was, you know, Imam Sayyid would always say, this is a sign of a true Sheikh, you know, where everybody come to the, you know, to the light. And Abdul Majid, he recorded, he had, he still has a lot of uh, videos and photographs of all of these people. And he remembers all of them by name too. Was someone asked, the, the brother you, you were trying to think of the name of, is that Malam Idris? Yeah, Malam Idris. He's yeah. one, yes. He, he's one, uh, uh, very important one. He's not just one, he was the one at the time. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, it's, it's so many. Uh, uh, there was a poet, named, they used to call him Ma Mahda. Ha um, he passed away. Right. He, Pardon me. He, spent, <clears throat> he spent his life singing all the poems of Sheikh Ibrahim and Yas. Yes. And, yes. And, and he was just a beautiful person. And he was from Ghana and he would, every time Sheik would come, he would meet him at the airport. He would be here at the meetings, Wazifa. And he would start singing the poems, uh, you know, Sheik Ibrahim and Yasser's poems in, in the Arabic language. It was so beautiful. And the, um, in particular, the Ghana people, they would join in and I, you know, come, sometimes, you know, I, I thought I was in church or something like that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know? But um, it was really beautiful, and these and he, you know, these were some of the people that we, you know, got to know. Um, but as far as I was concerned, um, Ahmed Denson, Isa, CC, those two were the ones, that, especially in the eighties, who who helped me and many of us to even um, have the proper manners around Sheikh Hassan, yeah. which, which I didn't know at the time. Yeah, I yeah. learned how to, you know, how to, uh, how to act around a person like him. Yeah, it was, we was raw, for sure. Yeah, we, we was real raw. Mm -hmm. You know, I remember the first time, I, I, it wasn't even Sheikh Hassan, it was Sheikh Tijani. I, uh, I was so annoyed with something was happening. I raised my voice and I, and I realized, you know, what a mistake I made. No one said anything to me. It was it just that uh, I, I saw a look. I was saying that uh, this would never happen with me ever again. And it never happened. I never raised my voice again, you know? So they, they, they taught you a dab even, even when they didn't say anything, you know, but well, they would just use their eyes. But they even beyond their eyes, they 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 showed you in their example. We used to uh, we used to all try to watch and and see Sheikh Hassan make wudu. It was like magic to me. The way he would make, where he would wash, even when he would just wash his hands to for, for to, to eat, I would sit there and watch him how he would wash his hands. You know, it's just so amazing to me. You know, a man that was so precise in everything that he did. I remember he told me one day he said, "I mean, you will never know me unless you come visit me." He said, "You never know your shek unless you come to see where he lived." And uh, that was another stage of uh, our development when we went to visit him. He told us, anyone who goes to visit a Wali of Allah, he said, the first step that you make to go visit the Wali of Allah, whatever you intended, Allah will give it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's when I got my car fare to go visit my chef. <laughs> in 19 what it was 83 83 yeah. Allah, and i and i see uh uh umashaki had mentioned that that, that was uh madaha brother madaha was the name of the brother who yes yes mm -hmm. the great the great May Allah continue to 
elevate him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Love that, Sister Shaki. Thank you, Sister Shaki. <laughs> Too bad you're not on because I know you know all these names that, you know, <laughs> you old man forgot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you mentioned going to visit Sheikh Hassan. Um, what year did, did, did both of you, what was the first time that you went to Senegal? 83. 83. You went, went together? Yes. MashaAllah. What month was it? Uh, it was around just before the Molid. Winter so time? It was winter time, right? In the winter time, yeah. 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 Who, who else was on that trip? Was it just the two of you or was it a group? I don't know. It was 13 of us. MashaAllah. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was uh, Imam Saeed. Uh, Idris Bey. Idris Bey. Uh, Abdusnami. Uh, Imam uh, Abdusnami. Uh, Sheikh uh, uh, Abdulazim uh, Shabazz. Yes. Uh, uh, it was uh, Abdulaziz. Uh, Mustafa. Mustafa, yes. Uh, uh, boy. It was. There was a, uh, there, there was a Jamaican Abdul man. Abdul Mukni. Abdul Mukni, yes. He passed away. And then was, uh, it was a Jamaican man that came with us. Yeah, it was a Jacob, a Jamaican man that just came along for the ride. Mm-hmm. Uh, was there any females on the trip? I don't think so. No. When we got there, Sister Karima was there. Right, right. She was there. Right? Mm-hmm. And Sheikh Hassan told me that the ambassador from the, the, the ambassador of the United States to Senegal called him and asked him, why are so many Black Americans going to visit Senegal? Mm. I said, Sheikh, they... They, they had the nerve enough to ask you that? He said, yes. yes. So that told me that this must have been a very rare, rare thing. Right. At the time. Right. You know, only 13 Black Americans are going to visit, going to visit, you know, all at one time, going to visit their Sheikh in Senegal. Mm-hmm. And they really made a big thing of it in Senegal, didn't they? Was Sufi, was Sufi with us? Sufi, yes, Sufi. Sufi Muhammad was there. Sufi was with us. Uh, as we go along, I'll think, I'll think uh, more. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, when I got there, you know, I, I I was expecting Africa to be different. So I had I had mentioned something to uh, Imam Saeed, which is may Allah be pleased with him, which uh, is in in a impacted me and then it impacted me then and, and and even when I mentioned it it also impacted me you know I was saying man I was expecting something different from Africa you see I mean you whatever you want to see that's what you want to see if you want to see this part of Africa this is what you'll see if you want to see the beauty of the people then that's what you will see so I chose the beauty of the people. That's why I see Africa so beautiful, because I I look at the people. No, everybody is not. You know, uh, you know, everybody is, you know, uh, is is not good. There's bad people too. But uh, when I started, when we got the call act, and even the ride from the airport, you know, I was so disappointed what I saw with the poverty and and all of that. But then when in retrospect, when I see the beautiful smiles and and the love and the respect that the people gave me, I, how did I overlook that as opposed to worrying about the poverty? You know, when these people had so much more than what we had to give them. I mean, you know, and from that point on, I only look for the beauty and things that I was taught by Imam Saeed. May Allah be pleased with him. I mean, I mean, Sheikh Hassan, he, he told us, welcome to your home. He said, we lost you 400 years ago and now you have returned. Welcome to your home. And he said, you must go to Gory Island. <laughs> <laughs> yes, 
that you must go. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You know, he, he treated us so good that I think the people of, of, of Medina Bay got jealous. He took us to his uncle's house. Oh, my goodness. He took us around. The Mauritanians. Yeah, all the Mauritanian people were there. And the people were so like, they, they were, to me, they were acting like, well, who are these, you know, um, Americans? They, they, they just couldn't believe that they were Black Americans that were Tijania there in their home. I think that was like, that was like the, uh, the event of the whole, whole week. They had us on um, television, radio and everything. Amazing. And then we met Kunta Kente's one, one of her relatives, she came to visit Sheikh and, and she said, when you go back home to America, I want you to tell Alex Haley, he didn't send us his money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, been, been to Kunta, yeah. Yeah, been to I, I, have a, I have a picture of her. Yeah, uh, when I find it, I'll post it. Yeah. Please, please, I'll do how long were you all there during that trip? For about 13 days. Yeah. And did everybody come back after 13 days or did some people stay a little longer or? Somebody got uh, in prison. <laughs> One person, Sheikh would let come back. <laughs> I think I may know who you're talking about, but we won't, I won't, <laughs> I won't press it. Uh, um, somebody definitely asked who was that <laughs> not telling those, those who know don't say nothing if I, if I tell you I gotta kill you <laughs> so I wonder, if, I mean, is there anything else that either of you all would want to share about sort of the impact of that trip and interacting with Muslims on the African continent? I mean, it, you know, it, I, if, 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 I mean, you've already said a lot, so if, if nothing else comes to mind, that's okay. But this is just something I'm, I'm really interested in hearing more about. What was it like going to Africa? Now you're in a community with Africans and African-Americans. How did how did that you know impact you? How did that sort of change you? It for me, I I used to um, listen to the other um, African black African American scholars like um, Ben Cannon and Dr. Clark and the one who wrote um, Before the Mayflower. I read all <coughs> many of their books and but. After that trip, meeting our Sheikh there, um, especially sitting down and talking with um, Sheikh Tajani Sisi, um, it gave me a new perspective on Africa, on people, on Black people. And um, so my, my conversation with, with the people who follow Ben Cannon and Dr. Clark and all of them, they're very nice people and everything, but um, I was able to, and, and you know how you uh, scholarly people get in these type of arguments, not arguments, but anyway, I was able to shut them up by saying- Our Argument is correct. <laughs> yeah. I was able to get complete silence when I say, none of them knew the Arabic language. And most of the information about Africa for the last seven, 800 years, the majority of it was written in Arabic. And now we're like exposed to this by, you know, by our relationship with Sheikh Hassan, Sheikh Dajani Sisi, the Inyas family. And, um, and that's when I would just get complete silence. So that, that used to make me happy. Yeah, I'm basically the same for me. And, and two, uh, uh, the simplicity of uh, of the place remind me of my home, you know, uh, in the in the south. So I I I felt at home, you know. And what I liked about Africa was the president was 
was black, the vice president was black, you know, the, the, the people of scholarship was black. I was black. <laughs> yeah, you know, so, uh, you know, you know, this, 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 this made me feel when I came back to America, you know, that, hey, I know something now that y'all probably kept away from us for centuries that, uh, you know, these people are not just jumping up and down in trees and uh, living in mud huts. These are people who are extremely knowledgeable. And even though they was living with uh, maybe like in America, but they knew every they knew they knew everything that was going on in America more than we did. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, so they had knowledge of their country and knowledge of our country more than we did. Yes, you know, so uh, you know, I mean, these was kids, you know, like sixteen and seventeen years old, was telling us about politics in America that we didn't even know. So uh, I, we were so impressed with them. But the other thing too with Shaq Hassan, Shaq Hassan, no matter how, where uh, and how he would do, even when he would laugh, we having dinner, he would always at some point get serious, you know, because he knew that the medicine that we needed, you know, uh, it had to be ongoing. You know, and, and he used to tell us the importance of making five salat in the masjid, you know, being good to your parents. All the tenets of, of being a Tajani, but he would always reinforce it, you know. And he said to me one day, and I think I said it earlier, he said, if you hold on to this, wherever I go, you will go. And uh, I was able to, uh, to sit with two presidents and sit with uh, dignitaries in the White House, thousand dollar dinners, you know, and all of this because he said that if you stick with this, wherever I go, you will go. And I pray to Allah that I will see you, Yeshek, and Jennifer for those. I mean, I mean so there's one I, more thing, I, I mean, that I've found that was amazing. Um, he would have Sheikh Hassan. He would have all of these guests in this little house, in his in his father's house, this little house. And um, one one particular day, uh, a delegation from one of the uh, governors of Nigeria came with his entourage and Mercedes long Mercedes Benz and servants and everything. He came in. He took his hat off and literally like crawled in front of Sheikh Hassan. And he asked Sheikh Hassan, he said, make dua, make dua for me because I want to be the president of Nigeria. <laughs> so later on, Sheikh Hassan, he looks at me, he says, you see, this man is, is a billionaire and it's, it's not enough for him. Now, now he wants to be the president. You know? <laughs> but I was just amazed at the, at the type of people that, that would come and just ask him to pray for him. They probably paid him to pray for him. Yes. You, know, I agree. you know, I was just amazed to see all, all kinds of business people, uh, politicians, and this was in his in his little home before he built the house. The, pe the people from all over the world were coming to visit him there in Kaolack, Medina. I was just totally shocked. They would wait outside in the heat and dust and everything until they got the opportunity to go in. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> they had to wait online. They had to wait online. They just didn't go right in. They had and to wait. People were millionaires. It's a billionaire. <laughs> they had to take the hat off and crawl. Crawl. Absolutely amazing. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. There's, there's so much in that. It, 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 two things that struck me, uh, Haji Amin, when you mentioned uh, it reminded you of um, back home. You know, you, you know I, I grew up in uh, South Carolina as well. And uh, when my dad would come to visit me, because my dad's from from Jersey and, you know, spent a lot of time in Jersey and New York, you know, but he traveled to West Africa. Um, that I, I'll, I'll mention that the way I met Sheikh Hassan was with my dad. You know, he was going to Senegal to talk about doing some business 
And uh, he was introduced, I believe, actually by Brother Ajib to uh, Sheikh Hassan. So he said, come on with me. You know, we're going to go to Senegal together. And, you know, I end up, you know, leaving, leaving my heart <laughs> behind, you know. But, uh, uh, but when my dad would come to visit me down in South Carolina, he would say the same thing. Like, this reminds me of Africa, you know. Um, so there's a, there's a, there's a lot, alhamdulillah, of gems that you all are sharing that, that are, you know, even when you mentioned, you know, young people knowing about the, the history of Africa, uh, of the history of America. Um, Chuck D actually said something similar from Public Enemy. So the first time he went to South Africa, he, uh, he experienced it and it just blew his mind. So I, th I think there's a, there's a way in which that the experiences of you all, our elders going to, to Senegal for spiritual reasons, doesn't always get talked about or thought about in that frame as a part of this history of African-Americans going to Africa and sort of just discovering how big the world is and how big our people is. So um, I'm just reflecting on that vocally because I want the audience to take note of some of this as well, inshallah. Um, Thank you. But I'm uh, Muhammad. One of the things that I wanted to ask you about uh, Imam Jabal, you mentioned that um, it was talking to Imam Sheikh Tijani, Sisi, that, that sort of um, had a particular resonance with you while you were in Senegal. Can you maybe elaborate a little bit more on that? Well, it was more, I, you know, I had, it was more really, um, Sheikh Tijani CC when, really when he came to America and he was learning English and, and we used to go visit him up in the Bronx and um, we would, uh, all kind of questions would be thrown to him about, you know, about politics and black people and this and that and the other. And his, <laughs> and he would say, Allah does what he wants. Every answer was Allah does what he wants. Allah does what he wants. And I was just amazed at that. And one, I think one of the, uh, the astronauts were going up in space and he checked to Johnny said in his English, he said, maybe the white people they'll become closer to Allah if they if they stay up there long enough you know and I just fell out I, I you know I was just <laughs> amazed at his as his answers and the the other thing is um he had Sheikh Tijani Sisi he was he was teaching us also all right but these particular meetings, he was really talking about Hakika Muhammadiyah, which is not for the general audience. And one, one particular brother, I think he passed away, he was a bus driver. And um, remember his name? Remember Malik. Me? Abdul Malik. Abdul Malik, yeah. And um, he, had taped, he had taped these uh, recordings, all right, of this, of these um, unbelievable that a person would have that much knowledge about the Prophet Muhammad, some of them, it was just, it was off the charts for, for us listening to it. And, um, and it was on some tape. So I had a cassette tape, maybe about three or four hours of it. And, um, and I pass it on to, to Kaaba. And the word got out um, that, you know, Kaaba was like, you know, spreading it out, letting people hear it. And Sheikh Tajani got me on the phone. Do not give that tape out anymore. <laughs> Call right. God, stop right. him right away. Do not get that tape out. But I was just um, astonished at his, his knowledge, Sheikh Tajani Sisi. It was, it was just amazing. And the way that he could write, he wrote his, his script was was like was like a typewriter in Arabic, unbelievable, perfect straight lines and everything. So I, I was just amazed by that, and um, and um, and the questions we we used to ask Sheikh Tajani, and his only answer was, "Allah does what He wants. Allah yes. does what He wants. Allah does what He wants." And he he was right. Yes. One of the things I like to correct, if you don't mind, uh, uh, the Abdul Malik, you talking about it? He, he's still alive. It's oh. the other Kaaba oh. that, that, that returned to Allah. Mm -hmm. There's two Abdul Maliks. All right. I'm sorry, sorry uh, nephew. Uh, 
<laughs> nah, nah, thank you. You got nothing to apologize for. And actually, uh, Auntie Aisha Jeffries had had said it on the chat too. So I'm I'm glad you you clarified that. So you just anticipated <laughs> the next thing I was gonna say. That's perfect. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Um so I'm looking at the time uh, just so to get people ready, I'm gonna in a little bit, inshallah, shift and open it up for people in the audience, you know, both here in the Zoom and also I think we have somebody monitoring the YouTube now. So we can um inshallah take some some questions from the audience soon. So if you have questions, you know, start start to jot them down in the chat, inshallah ta'ala. So one one question that I another question that I had was, you know, in this period of the late 1970s, early 1980s, how were you all received as a Sufi Jamaat back here in the States, back here in New York? How did people perceive, you know, you all Tijani brothers and sisters who were going back and forth to Africa and whatnot in that in that moment? I it was a, it was a bittersweet, you know. It de depends on, you know, depends on who you talk to. You know, uh, some people, you know, they didn't, they didn't know too much about Tariqa. They knew about Islam. And, and uh, so th those who uh, knew Sheikh Hassan, you know, most of them, they couldn't say anything bad about Sheikh Hassan. You know, but they would say something bad about Tariqa. But Shek would, if they would come to Shek, Shek would tell them, you know, you know, we said, Ashadu la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Allah, Rasulullah, you know, and what's bad about that and saying a stock full of Allah and sending Darud on the Prophet, you know, and that would end that, you know, but yeah, it, it was because we was probably one of the first Tarikas in America you know, uh, yeah, it was it was it was tough, but you know, check uh, those who voiced that was heard. Uh, they was prepared to uh, to defend the Tarika here. You know, we were blessed with that. We had a lot of good voices. You know, both in the north, north and the south. I know. Uh, you know, Aisha Jeffries and her husband Daoud. You know, they are the good, very uh, strong supporters of Sheikh Hassan and strong voices. You know, so uh, we was we was uh, really equipped to handle it. I thought that um, the 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 Maulid celebration. Um, in the in the eighties, and you know, we used to go to uh, curb. They call it curbai. Uh, one of the daughters of Sheikh Ibrahim Yash purchased a home up there, up in the Bronx, and we used to do the Maulid up there. And even before that, we used to do the Maulid with the Ghana people <clears throat> up in the Bronx also. And one one when we went to Kaolak Medina to visit our Sheikh, Sheikh Hassan, he spoke to us in English about the Maulid. And I recorded it and I wrote it down. And I, and I published a little pamphlet about it because this is my first time hearing about um, um, the, the poet Busseri and things like this and why you should have a Maulid. And, um, so all of this was new to us, but we didn't hear it in English. So when we went to the Maulid in up in Kerbai, you know, everything is in Arabic and uh, and in Wolof, and it was very nice and the song sounded very nice. But I was getting like I was like, man, you know, I need a little English here. <laughs> I need a little English. So. I remember the speech that our chef gave us. I had it in English, and they let me get up and read it. Um, the um, uh, the Maulid um, and its validation from Quran and from Hadith that our chef gave us, because he knew we didn't understand the language. 
And after I, after I got up and read that in English, most of the Ghana people got up and they said, thank you so much, man, because I've been coming to this thing for years and I didn't know what, <laughs> I didn't know what the heck was going on. But I was saying all, all of that to say that in the 80s, early 80s um, in New York City, a maulid was a very, very rare thing to do, very rare. And if you mentioned it, the first thing was haram and this and that and the other. So as as Brother Means said, it was you know it was a bittersweet you know relationship. I, I remember when we when we had the uh, the Eid up in in uh, was the Lehman College. Yes, yes, Lehman, yes. Yeah. That was a wonderful occasion when Sheikh came there. And we were all new Muslims and new Marids. And um, we were out in the park. And um, it was just an amazing, uh, I think um, I have some photographs from that. And uh, Abdul Majid has, uh, has some photographs from that event. Mm -hmm. Were there particular communities that were more, um, I guess, open to, to you all at that time? I mean, I know that, you know, I know Imam Saeed was one of the founders of the Mosque Islamic Brotherhood. Uh, several of the people that we've interviewed have mentioned uh, going to 72nd Street, as you both did today. You know, were, were these communities particularly sort of open? Were there others that were? Were there certain that were particularly hostile, <laughs> if you'd be willing to mention? I, I think for the most part, they, they were just, they just smiling at night. I, I don't think any of the mosques was open really to Tarika. Uh, when I when I think about it, I remember one year uh, they were Sheikh uh, Hassan was invited down to Masjid Taqwa. At that time, uh, the, the uh, Imam was uh, Imam Abdul Rahman, if I'm not mistaken. I'm from Egypt, yeah. and, uh, and so they both want to talk, and when. And the uh, Imam of the Rahman finished, may Allah be pleased with him. He turned to Sheikh Hassan. And it was time for Sheikh Hassan, may Allah be pleased with him to speak. So, you know, this was, it was this type of hostility. Even though, you know, they were smiling your faces, you know, but it was, it was a lot of hostility. I found um, the, the Yasin College. Yassin community, um, uh, um, the uh, community of, of Oba. He was the brother of the one who, um, well, he had his own community in Brooklyn. Um, they were very, you know, I mean, to me personally, um, I got along with them and I used to talk about, you know, Sheikh Hassan and the Tariqa and some of the books I've read. And they were very interested, so much so that Oba himself, he came and took the tariqa. And he invited Sheikh, and Sheikh came down to his masjid. And the Brooklyn community from Masjid Taqwa and everyone came out to, to, to greet him. And um, it was a very nice reception. So, you know, the people, you know, they, I, I, I think it depended on, on the individual Marie. You know, but I, I got a nice response from, from most people. If I did say anything about the Tariqa, which I didn't sometimes, but most of the time I was just, you know, I'm your Muslim brother and I was there, you know, uh, uh, as, as your brother and that's it. Mm -hmm. And just for anybody who doesn't know, uh, Imam Jawa was referring to Imam Oba York, who was the Imam of, I believe the name of the organization was the African Islamic Mission. Um, Very good. Yes. The, yes. The brother of Malachi York of the Ansar Allah community, but different communities. <laughs> yes, different communities. <laughs> different communities. Yeah. And I must say, thank you for mentioning that. Um, that Sheikh Tajani CC came and visited um, at the request of Oba, went to visit his brother, or what they call him, Dr. York. And um, had a, you know, they had a, they, they had probably, I don't know whether they ate dinner or whatever, but they had a, they went to visit him together, Sheikh Tajani and Oba. And when Sheikh Tajani came back, he, uh, you know, we was doing a wazifa and after the wazifa was talking, 
And Sheikh Tijani, he looked at me and he said, do you know Dr. York? So I was about to laugh. Then I, I you know, so I, I didn't laugh. I said, yes, 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 yes. Then Sheikh Tijani said, music and Imam, no good. He said, music and Imam is no good. So that told me that, that he must have went to visit him, you know? And then Oba told me, yes, yeah, you know, I took Sheikh Tijani over there to visit him. But um, the people in, uh, in the Brooklyn community, they, they weren't, I, I didn't see them being as hostile to Tariqa. They were just like kind of, you know, just like, you know, I don't want to hear it or, you know, yeah, you know, this Sufi thing, nah, you know, you know, tell me, let's talk about something else. You know, that was their attitude. You know. Well, you know, you have no word, I said hostile. <laughs> say, say that again. How do you mean? The word, I said hostile. You, you, your sound went down a little bit. You said the word you said was hostile? Lack of a better word. <laughs> <laughs> but you said for lack of a better word you said hostile <laughs> but there's something going on with your sound uncle i don't know uh can you say, say something hello now nah, that's better that's okay. better maybe you just got to be close to it I don't know. No, okay okay i'm doing a lot um and again uh if people could start you know, jotting down your questions because I'm going to shift to that in a little bit and I don't want it to be a lull, <laughs> you know, if people can jot down your questions. But uh, another question I wanted to ask is, so I, I know from talking to, you know, from doing my research, I know that there were a couple of other Sufi Turuk that were active in that late 70s, early 80s peak period in New York. I know there was the Burhaniya uh, uh, connected to the Sheikh from Sudan. I know there was the Qadariya connected mm -hmm. to uh, Sheikh Jalani from Pakistan. What, uh, what was the relationship or the interaction, if any, between the Tijanis at that time and people from these other Sufi communities? Those I named and maybe some that I don't know about that you could, you could uh, enlighten us about as well. Well, I know a few of them used to come to our circle mm. and, 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 and make Wazifa, make Halala and Wazifa with us. You know, the yeah, they were coming. The, 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 right? the, that you that that they gave the the, the reward to at the last diner in New York. Yeah, uh, 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 Sheikh Abdul Rashid. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, he was always with us, all the time, all the time. So they would come. I I, I don't think too many of us went to visit them, but uh, they would always come. And sit with us. The Tarikas was no problem. Yeah, I visited the the Burhania people, and I think they were in Brooklyn. And they had us. One of the brothers had a store down in the village. Very nice. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I think I uh, went there once. Yeah, yeah, the Burhania yeah. community, and. Um, you know, but we knew that there were other Tarika communities. Mm -hmm. And what and they are the Sheikh uh down lower Manhattan, uh Pfizer, Sheikh Pfizer. Yes, the, the uh, Habenica order. Right, right. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, was very go to visit yeah. them. Yes. Yeah. They had a masjid in, in the village. Yes, yes. Uh Leroy Street. Yes. Yeah. And just for, for people who, who aren't familiar. Uh, so that's uh, Sheikh Abdul Rashid Mukashfi, uh, who is uh, one of our, our elders, beloved, who's doing a lot of work. I didn't know that he was coming to the circles back then, but I, I've spoken with him and interviewed him, and he's always shown a great deal of love and, you know, love, you know, for Ajumat. Yeah. I mentioned that he would come visit. He's full of love. And um, uh, I knew him before I became a Muslim. Mm -hmm. uh, I think before he was Muslim also. That's how, that's how far we go back. Mashallah. And uh, I mean, he's, he's a beautiful uh, man. May Allah can continue to preserve him. Ameen, ameen, ameen. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Well, I'm, I'm going to ask one more question and I'm going to shift over to some questions from the audience, inshallah. But, um, well, I'm going to ask two more questions. First question I want to ask is, is I noticed that from, you know, hearing you both speak 
and from other people I've spoken with, it seems that there was a particular kind of affinity or relationship between the African-American brothers in the Jamaat and the brothers and sisters from Ghana. Um, would you say that that's a fair, you know, assertion? And if so, what do you think that was, what would you attribute that to? Was it the shared language? Was it just a testament to people like El Haji Ahmed Dempson? <laughs> Allah be pleased with him. What, what do you think that, that was behind that connection? I would like to give credit to um, uh, Haj Ahmed Dimson, um, and um, and Issa Sisi, and um, Brother Abbas, um, Hassan, and um, Ab Abu Qasim, yeah. who passed away. They they were very. Edie Edi, Edi Sambo, who's still here, they were very instrumental in um, in helping uh, well, myself. I got to speak for myself anyway, and helping us, helping me to um, develop a relationship with uh, not only the Senegalese brothers and sisters, but the Ghana people, okay. and and just learning, you know, cultural things. And they they were. They were just very nice to to me, very nice to to the African American, to the new Marids, and they were very accommodating. I found that they were very accommodating to us. I, I really pretty much, I, I pretty much share the same feeling. You know, I I, I think because of Ahmed Dimson, may Allah be pleased with him. You know, even when we uh, got our own Zawiya, he would come. He, he would be there every Friday, you know, he would come. And, uh, you know, it, it's just that we loved him so much. And he was a funny guy too. Oh, he was funny. <laughs> he was funny. You know, and, uh, but, you know, I, I have to be very careful because I have so much love for all my brothers and sisters in the Tarika. You know, and uh, but uh, you know, the Ghana people—they like the people that grew up with in the South. That's that's <laughs> what it is. Yeah, they remind us of, of ourselves here in America. Yeah, you know, when I think about uh, the people where I grew up in the South, it was the Ghana people. Yeah, mostly. You know, uh, just hardworking people, very sharing. You know, and uh, uh, this, you know, this good people. Like I say, I'm the all all my brothers and sisters. I feel the same way. You know, it's just that uh, they just remind me of how the way I grew up. Alhamdulillah. Well, I have so many more things I, I, I will be asking you all <laughs> in the coming months and whatnot. But um, inshallah, um, I do want to take a moment and just um, ask if there's anything that either of you all would like to like to share, like to mention that maybe I didn't think to ask. Um, yeah, anything, anything else you want to add before we shift to, to questions from the audience, inshallah. Well, you know, the, the, the thing is, you know, you had sister Shaki and her husband, her brother Taha, who I remember Shaki Hassan said one day, he said, those two is, is better to me than four lawyers, you know? Uh, so there was so many people that, that, that have passed on that, that in those early days who supported Shaq Hassan financially and uh, and morally, you know, and that, uh, you know, because they have passed on so long ago that, you know, they, they're not remembered, you know, but, you know, in those times when, you know, it, it, uh, the Tariq was uh, in his grassroots, you know, uh, you know, we, we need a strong, strong bodies and determination to uh, to keep this going. 
I remember uh, Imam Saeed, and they'll always go back to Imam Saeed. Imam Saeed, every Sunday, knowing that nobody would be at the Zawir but him, hmm. he would go. And when I found out, I would take two buses to go up there, and it would just be in him every Sunday doing the Wazifa together. This was every Sunday. Nobody came, you know. So this was the type of determination that was needed, you know, to uh, to keep this thing going. You know, after Sheikh Hassan went back, it would, you know, the Sheikh is not here. You know, people start slacking off. They wouldn't come, you know. But there was there was a group that would come. You know, Mustafa, Imam Saeed, Jabbar. You know, Shabazz, Abdul Majid was always there. You know, and and um, and his financial support. You know, all these things. You know, besides from the benefit that we got from the Tarika, there was a lot of people who put a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and to keep this thing going to for it to be where it's at today. May Allah bless them. The ones that uh, have passed on, may Allah put light in their grave. And the ones that are still here, may Allah preserve them. Amen. 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 I, I, I thank Brother Amin for that. And um, he reminded me that um, our, our, our Imam, Imam Saeed, he was like my father. He married me. He took care of me. He, he always gave me very good advice. And he told me, he said, Jabal, just look at it this way. We're in a hospital. Sheikh Hassan is the doctor and we're the patients. I said, I got it, Imam. Now I understand it a lot better, you know? And, and I must also say uh, my dear sister, Ashaki, you know, she, she really, helped me and she was always her and and the late the Taha they were great um contributors and helpers of Sheikh Hassan you know even to the point where I needed some help with a little project that I was doing and um and Ashaki took the took the time um to to help me and re and and um to publish uh, a, a book of speeches that Sheikh Hassan made in the 90s. It was called Sincere Advice. And it was Ashaki who did the editing and everything and encouraged me, you know, to just finish this thing and get it out there, you know? So, you know, that's- it's, just so, it's, it's, just so, it's so many people, you know, that, uh, that if they're alive and their name is not mentioned, you know, they're alive. Get me, you know, because there was so many people who, who, who helped Shaq. I mean, Aisha Jeffrey. I mean, she did so much, and you know, it was the support of her husband Daoud, you know, uh, and and the brothers and sisters in Detroit. Yes, you know, it was just, uh, we can't get any anyone, you know, during that period, but. Uh, we probably will. My battery is dying again. Uh, mashallah, mashallah. Well, we're, we're shifting now to uh, questions from the audience. So maybe we will, uh, I'll, I'll start asking them now <laughs> before, you, before your battery dies, inshallah. Um, first question we have, someone was asking about that pamphlet that, that uh, you have, Jabal, you read with Sheikh Hassan's speeches. Is that still around? <laughs> Um, I, you know, I, I left mine in Africa. I think some people may still have them. Um, we, um, we, we got, we actually, it was, it was, I don't, I don't even have a copy. <laughs> and I'm talking about the pamphlet that you mentioned earlier that you said you read at the Maulid. Oh, that one. I don't even know where that one is. I, I have to look in my, in my, my papers for that one. 
Okay. Okay. And 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 I was gonna ask you about the the <laughs> sincere advice. I I had a copy at some point that I'm gonna dig for, but inshallah, maybe we can try to do a reissue <laughs> of that. Inshallah. Uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. The brother um, Abdul Malik from Texas. Him and his wife were the ones that actually um, recorded it. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I saw it, and I said, "Man, what are you guys gonna do with this?" And then I took it, just. You know, and I got with Sister Shock and we, you know, we published it. You know. Mashallah, mashallah. And this is the, exactly the kind of thing that I, I, I'm happy that we're doing this for, because I remember that book, you know, that I came across at some point at somebody's house. But I, I didn't know when I when I was holding in my hands that it was you, Imam Jabal and Haja Shaki and Brother Abdul Malik from Texas. I didn't know that, you know, what went into putting that book out. So these are the kind of things that I, I hope people are receiving and taking note of, inshallah. Um, uh, another question we have from the audience, somebody is asking, can you both talk about some of the khidmah that you all did for Sheikh Hassan? Hmm. The well, uh, book was one. The yeah, book, I can't The book was one, and I had some very nice um, contributors because, you know, it costs money to publish things. And uh, one, one brother came with a big fat check, and, I, and he said, do not mention my name. He wanted to remain anonymous, so I just kept it anonymous. And, um, um, you know, and um, Brother Amin and people, you know, it came out with money. You know? And that was, and Sheck was very happy. He called me on the phone. He said, Jabal, I want 500 copies immediately. <laughs> I said, okay, Sheck. Yeah. And he took them to South, South Africa. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the... We we all we all did Kitma for check. You know the the the, the thing is, uh, me personally, I would just like to say I did Kitma for check, and and for the Tarika and leave it like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I uh, I I've uh, uh, Jabai. Uh, I'm a little different from Jabai. Jab, Jabai is more the uh, the scholar type. Me, I'm just. I'm just the grunt. When you all were talking about, you know, sort of, I guess, how you came into Islam, the thing that, I, that, that stuck out to me was I've always known both of you to be very, very enterprising, entrepreneurial <laughs> people who, um, you know, are, are I'll, I'll go ahead and say this, you know, uh, me and... Um, and uh, Kaba were talking about this once. We were saying, you know, some of our uncles, y'all were bastions of consistency. <laughs> you know, we'll come and, you know, it, not, you know, some of us will come and we'll have a good idea. We'll put in some effort and then we'll kind of disappear. You know what I mean? Some of us. But alhamdulillah, we, we have y'all example to look at of how to be consistent, you know, how to, how to continue to show up. I must admit, Kaba also he used to bring me cassettes of of speeches of Sheikh Hassan speaking to, you know, uh, when, you know, when he was student there, when he was, right. when Kaba was there as, you know, as a child. Mm. And uh, Kaba used to bring me back the tapes, the cassette tapes of Sheikh Hassan's speeches in English to the, to the, uh, to the Americans. <laughs> and thinking of that, I remember like Abdul Malik and uh, Suleiman and Kaba, they was there when we got there. Yeah, they <laughs> were. <laughs> Kaba, Kaba's been in Jamaica a long time. I think pretty much all his life. <laughs> we have another question. Someone's asking if you both could talk more about how and when the, the early American Zawiyas were opened. Uh, I mean, the first one uh, was in the Bronx, and that was on Harriet Avenue. And 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 then uh, Kirby, uh in the Bronx also. Uh, and and then uh, uh, hmm. did I mention Brooklyn? Well, you just did. <laughs> huh? Brooklyn on. Aussie uh, uh, was 
was uh, one of the some of the earliest uh, with us. Uh, and uh, I think before that, uh, it was doing it in uh, Ahmed Dimson house was the, was the uh, his, his house was his house. And Cece's house. And he's a CC house, yes. Those those were the place that we went to do the Wazifa. Yeah. Yeah. And then we we would go to to uh, Sister Shaki's house. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and and, and uh, at one time we were doing the Wazifa at State Street. Hmm. Father, yeah. when, what, around when was this? Uh this was in the eighties. Um, uh, uh, I think Luke Manadou Majid was leading the circle. Subhanallah. I don't know, Jabbar, if you remember that. No, I, I, I don't remember. Right. Was Sheikh, yeah. was Sheikh Dawood still alive at that point? Uh, if he was, he wasn't coming downstairs. Okay. Right. Because uh, uh, actually, he had to be alive because if the uh, the present group is that that's there now, they, they would have been a problem. Mm -hmm. Even then, you know, one brother... Uh, uh, he was questioning the Jahada Kumar, you know, he was asking uh, Lukman Dumanjir to explain it. He asked him, what do you want me to explain? So and then he uh, he recited and explained it to him and then he says, okay, he walked away. Right. So who was this that, that asked? Uh, it, was, it, was, uh, it was an Arab. Ah, uh -huh, okay. Got it, got it, got it. And um, Sister uh, uh, Khadija Ahmed is, is mentioning that you all also used to come to New Jersey for Wazifa to a couple of places. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, I, I, come, I think it was in Orange or Patterson, mm. uh, uh, in the basement. That's where she's talking. Uh, uh, Umashaki mentioned that uh, Haji Latifa's house. Uh, so yeah, 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 yes, yes, yes. yes. We come there too, alhamdulillah. 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 Yeah, you know, you know, this is what I was saying. You know, you got two old men trying to remember. <laughs> <laughs> So thank you so much for reminding us. Alhamdulillah, the reminder is beneficial. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. One of our one of our beloved brothers from the UK asked, when you all were in Senegal, did, did you get to go to Gori Island? Uh, yes. Yes, we did. That was a great, great, uh, it was a great spiritual experience. Yes, yes, yeah, it was. Alhamdulillah. One that I won't forget. Sheikh Hassan said, all African-American, you must go to Gori Island. I remember when we went, Imam Saeed, uh, he, he said, look, I, I, I can't make that trip no more. It's too painful. Mm -hmm. So he, he wouldn't go with us. We were all, all in tears. There was, there was a Tijani brother there. And he took us upstairs and we did the wazifa on top of the uh where we was on the island right and one of the keepers was a tijani right and after we finished boohooing and crying he took us upstairs to do the wazifa too yeah. unbelievable so so where where did you all do the wazifa was it was it in the the structure on or on on, on top that you they, they had it, it's almost like a castle mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, carved out. You know where, you know where you can go up and uh, look upon. You know, I was told that 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 area is is the way they made the movie of uh, the Guns of Never Run mm. uh, up mm -hmm. there. So it's, I mean, it's it's so beautiful up there in the sea. Yeah. Have you have, have you been there? Me? Yes. Yeah. Yes, I've been. I've, I've I've been in there and cried and been there and angry and <laughs> yeah. Alhamdulillah. Um uh Alhamdulillah. Uh another one of our of our of our mothers, Dr. Karima Joseph, she's asking if um if 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 you all knew Brother Bilal Muhammad Ibn Farouk and if you knew yeah. uh Kofi Abdul Kareem. Uh uh Bilal Bilal knew very well mm. you know he had you know we used to spend so much time together very beautiful brother and a poet mm. yeah as for kofi uh uh kofi abdul kareem yes and he was somewhere 
I don't know. Maybe maybe she'll have a follow up message to let us know where he was from. Inshallah. Kofi Adu Kareem. Was he from also from Atlanta? I'm not sure. Kofi a uh, Kofi Adu Adu Kareem. No, I'm not sure. Where was Brother Bilal Muhammad Ibn Farouk from? He was from he was from New York. Okay. Yeah. I mean, before he before he ended up in Atlanta, I think mm -hmm. him and uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Sharif, they both were from from New York. They they ended up in uh, in uh, if I'm not mistaken in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And uh, oh, she said Kofi was from Ghana. He was from Ghana. Mm -hmm. Kofi. Uh, and uh, I I think this was a different Bilal that they're speaking of. A different Bilal? Yeah, I think this was a different Bilal. I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if maybe she means Bilal from Detroit. Me, you mean Big Bilal? If yes. he told me uh, you know, like he had a, he's like a tree. Yeah, I know him. Okay, yeah. they said uh, his name was Bilal Farid, not Farouk. Yeah, yeah, I know, I, I know Bilal, yeah. Mm. May Allah be pleased with him. I mean, return, yeah. Inshallah. Was he a, a photographer? Yes. He was from um, MIB? Uh, no, he was from Detroit, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, this Bilal. Oh, OK. Yeah. Uh, Cleveland, uh, if it's a Bilal, I'm thinking he's a real tall brother, maybe 6'5", six, 6'7". Six, uh, mm -hmm. But uh, unfortunately, in, in them days, we didn't, we didn't get the last names like now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, mean. So I'm I'm looking, I think yes, it said uh uh Bala Farid, photographer. No. I'm I'm looking to see if there's that, any that's what Baral, uh, Bala Farid, the photographer. photographer. Yes. From, I remember him a uh, He's from New York, right? I thought he, he was from New York. Yeah, yeah. but he lived in Atlanta. And, and he moved to Atlanta. Right. That's what I thought. That's where he passed away. Yeah. And he, his he, he was a professional photographer. Yes. I right. remember him very well. Right. He's right. Very, very uh, intelligent person. Very good manners. He was just like a very unique person. He was always there at the Wazifa. <laughs> I, and I can tell you the story by uh, Sheikh Sharif. May Allah be pleased with him. Uh, I had, uh, he had asked me to, uh, I had moved him because uh, I'm, I'm a, a professional mover by trade. And uh, he asked me to move him once to an area in Brooklyn was, it was, it was infested with all kind of bad people. So I said, sure, you sure you want me to move you in there? He said, don't worry about it. I'm gonna get rid of him. Hmm. Uh, so I moved him there and I would ask, ask the, uh, the uh, crack dealers, I say, yo, bro, you mind if you move over so I can move the furniture up? He said, okay, we do that for you, bro. Yeah. I came back in about six months. They was frankincense and uh, myrrh burning in the, in the lobby. No crack addicts, no crack dealers. <laughs> the place was clean. Lahi, he, I told you I would clean it up. I don't know what he did. He cleaned the whole building up. And it's still clean today, Wallahi. So, so, ah, go ahead, Brother Lam. I mean, just, just to clarify, um, we've been hearing this a while about the, the two different Bilals, and we would like to get some clarity on it, if you can help mm -hmm. us, us with it. One was from Detroit, and I believe the other, Bilal uh, Farid. Farid from yeah. New York. Okay, okay. Right, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Bilal was either from Cleveland or Detroit, but he was he was tall, real tall guy. And he spent some time in Morocco. And he used to go back and forth to Morocco if I'm if it's the same Bilal. Mm. We used to call him Big Bilal. Uh, hopefully, it's, it's the same one. Mm. Uh, but B Bilal Farid was from New York, I know, because I spent many years with him. It's funny because even even the way I don't know something something somebody texted about the name even threw me off. <laughs> I just was like, well, I, I, I don't know which <laughs> how we talking about, but 
Alhamdulillah, this is this is really good because I, another thing I noticed is that for those of us that weren't around in those days, ah, salam alaikum. Zainab. 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 MashaAllah. MashaAllah. But uh, for those of us that weren't around, sometimes our, our knowledge is limited to our geography. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you're from New York and you, you wasn't around back then, you don't necessarily know the people from Detroit and vice versa, you know. So right. this is helping us straighten a lot of that out, inshallah ta'ala. Um, someone asked, and this, this might be, oh, and someone added that, uh, um, um, uh, uh, Brother Bilal from Detroit, and I, I, I'm, the names are now throwing me off. So the Brother Bilal from Detroit, he was the first American from Medina to visit, yeah. uh, the first American to visit Medina yeah. to meet That's City true, right. He was the first, and uh, Imam Saeed, if I'm not mistaken, was the second one. <laughs> right, but uh, Zainab, Asalaamu Alaikum. Asalaamu Alaikum. How are you? Asalaamu uh, so we have a question from the YouTube. Someone mentioned, um, oh, and, and I do want to mention that um, a, a couple of people are sending their salams to both of you, our brother uh, Ryan Hilliard and uh, brother Hamza from, from Philly. Oh, wow. to both of you. But uh, the question we have here is, um, ah, this is actually from 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 uh, Brother Ryan. Salam alaikum, Brother Ryan. He said, uh, did Sheikh Hassan have any ziyadas to Canada? And if so, did either of you or anyone that you know accompany him? I'm not sure about that. Uh, I don't know. But if he did go, <laughs> I'd be my kid with him. <clears throat> but I, mm. I have never heard of that. What about you, Jabal? No, I, I, I don't know. No. No, I haven't heard of that. <clears throat> Not Canada. No. Um, Sheikh Abdul Majid. Pardon, Abdul Majid. He, uh, he, uh, yes. You're saying that he, uh, Haja Aisha. You're saying that uh, Sheikh Hassan did, um, Sheikh Uncle Abdul Mujid did accompany Sheikh Hassan to yes, Canada. Yes, I, really, I thought I was on mute and I was typing it in, talking uh, out loud to myself. But yes, it was um, Karun, uh, Abdul Mujid, and he has a, a story in that. I think that he, I don't know if we captured it initially, but in his interview, but a, a really, um, a really beautiful story there. When they went to Canada. Yes, it was. I'm not going to tell the story because it's not my story, if you will. So I don't want to. I don't want to um, add to it or have a error in my speech. But it was around the fact he didn't have Yay. a visa, and something that Sheikh did to open that way for for them. It was seemed like more of a spontaneous trip or something that Sheikh says is you know, you and you move. So it wasn't a didn't seem like a time to prepare, you know, for travel documents, as it were. But um, uh, Uncle Abdul can, can share it with you. Like, like, uh, along with the intent of the trip, you know, the context. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for that, Auntie. That's, I, I didn't know that. And that's something that, you know, Alhamdulillah, that's a, a big gem that you dropped on us that I think we need to maybe go back and have a session with uh, Uncle Abdul Majid to, to get that on. <laughs> get that recorded i remember uh meeting a friend of mine who lives in uh new haven um connecticut who's from canada and you know we would talk about tarika he, he knows about the tijanis very well he spent some time with imam share um but he mentioned that growing up he knew some tijanis in canada and later years later when he became more familiar with the tarika it always kind of stuck in the back of his mind when there was a moment when the young people started to become interested in kasawu he said, oh, yeah, we did have some Tijanis back there in Canada. But, you know, he didn't. I don't think he really, you know, remembered much beyond that. So that might have to do some digging <laughs> to try to excavate that history, inshallah. Alhamdulillah. Thank you again, Auntie, for that. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. So now, how do you mean? Were you going to say something? No, 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 no. I'm good. 
Alhamdulillah. So I, I see nap time is over. For mine as well. <laughs> I don't know if you hear them running in the background, mashallah. But um uh alhamdulillah. Uh, uh sister Shaki is mentioning, uh Mashaki is mentioning that um Bilal Farid from New York, the photographer from, from New York, yes. uh and, and MIB is the one who introduced her to Sheikh Hassan. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing that we might have to talk about amongst ourselves the best way to preserve both of their stories because I didn't know that that Bilal from New York uh had that connection to Sheikh Hassan so you know uh well unless this is the Bilal who who also moved to to Atlanta <laughs> okay okay yeah yeah okay okay so inshallah we're gonna have to do more you know um and we've been talking about ways to sort of capture some of the stories of some of our elders who who returned to Allah? Um, you know, and you have you have uh, 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 it's another very knowledgeable brother that moved to Atlanta from Detroit. Farouk, uh, mm. uh, was a uh, was it a uh, Farouk? Brother Mahmoud. Mahmoud. Uh, right. Yeah. Have you said brother Mahmoud from Detroit? Yeah. 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 He. he uh, <laughs> Uh, I think he returned to Allah also, right? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, he's still with us. He's I, still with us? I'm not sure. That's uh, uh, Shakin Abdul Hakim's father. Uh, oh, okay. Sister who was married to uh, Suleiman Robinson. Yeah, I said he returned to Allah. Oh, he did? No, oh. Not not Sakina's father, um, but Brother Mahmoud. Uh, uh, Brother Mahmoud, okay, with the big gray beard. I remember him. Yeah, yes, 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 yeah. yes. Yes, subhanAllah. You had a lot of sons lived in the land. Yes. Kina's father is Mustafa. Mustafa. Right, right. I remember <laughs> Brother Bahamut. Alhamdulillah. 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 And I, I, I'd like to ask you, um, Haji Amin, uh, about um, the Brother Sheikh Sharif that you mentioned. Because mm. this is my first time hearing his name. So he's another person that, inshallah, maybe we can get more mm. information on, inshallah. But um, but I know that's, that's a whole other project that, you know, we'll have to talk about offline, remembering people and lining people up, inshallah, but we're going to do that. Um, Haja Shaki, Umi, did you have, I see you have your hand up and I, and I missed you. I don't know, if, uh, did you want to add something or is that the, what you typed in the chat? Just inshallah, if you could let me know, Umi, if uh, you wanted to add anything or maybe you already typed in the chat, inshallah. Yeah, I think that was during the time she was speaking on uh, the candidate here. Ah, okay. Yeah. So, um, inshallah, I, I, I want to close out by asking, I guess, one last question. If there's any, uh, anything that, that either of you would want to sort of say in closing in the way of advice to the Jamaat, particularly younger people who, you know, we have a lot of people here who are new who never had the opportunity to meet Sheikh Hassan, you know, in the physical form. Of course, they're meeting him through you. But um, if there's any closing advice, inshallah ta'ala, that um, you would like to give give the audience before we before we close out, inshallah. Well, I, I, I would say that... We can't see your face, uncle. We just see your hand. Okay. What about now? There you go. Okay. Uh, can you see me okay? Yep. Okay. The you know Islam Islam should be taken seriously. You know, uh Islam first, Tariqa second. You know, you know, uh, I remember the Sheikh had went to and and uh, a lot of people took took uh, I thought it was Tariqa. And I said, yeah, Sheikh, they all took Tariqa. He said, no, 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 no. They took Islam, mm -hmm. you know? So from that statement, when when I knew that my Sheikh and our Sheikh, when he traveled, he was spreading Islam. And he used to always tell us, you know, no. do what Allah said do. And what he said, stop, stop, you know? so. And I usually live by that. And he said, try to, as much as you possible, you know, pray your five daily prayers in the masjid, if it's all possible. 
you know, and try and try and try to have a good opinion of a, of Allah and His creation. That's my advice to myself as well as to all. Allah. Thank you, brother Amin. And you know, I I would advise that anyone that is interested in the, in the tariqah want to do extra worship. They should learn their re religion very well first, the basic fundamentals, and stay well grounded. And uh, this is something that you know Al Sheikh, you know, always um, told us, you know, to know the religion very well. You know, know learn, do your best to have good character, be honest, tell the truth. And most of the time he was spreading Islam. And if, if the tariqah came up, then he would deal with the people as far as the tariqah is concerned. But generally it was just spreading the religion of Islam. Yes. Yes. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah khair, Jazakumullah khair. Well, thank you both so much. We, we've had the pleasure of having you for a couple hours. You know, if it was up to me, I'd have you for a couple more, but we'll, <laughs> we, we'll, we'll have to do more sessions in the future. But Jazakumullah khair, thank you both. May Allah reward you. This has been so, it's been so beneficial to me and I've had time to spend with both of y'all. So I can only imagine <laughs> some of the folks who out there in the audience who this is the first time hearing your story. So may Allah reward you. And thank you again. Well, thank everyone and all of our brothers and sisters, you know, for doing this and for you young people who are um, controlling the narrative and writing the story about yourselves and your past instead of someone else writing about you. I'm really happy about that. I'm I am. And I'm so happy too. Yeah. You know, uh, and I don't mind uh, sitting, uh, standing in your shadow. I mean, Allah, you know, cause your shadow to grow even wider so more of us uh, elders can either sit and stand in it. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Sidi Bilal, did you want to make any announcements before we close out? No, man. Nothing, uh, none other than I really enjoyed this session. Alhamdulillah, it was lively and it's. You know, I learned a lot about Shikasan and from, you know, our elders, Hajj uh, Amin and Imam Jabal, you know, both, you know, Alhamdulillah, Jazakumullah Khair. May Allah preserve you, preserve you and, and continue, uh, allow you to continue to grow, you know, with every breath, man. Thank you very much, Alhamdulillah. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alhamdulillah. Inshallah, if we could close out, we could ask both of you, Inshallah, to make a make a dua for us. It doesn't, doesn't have to be long <laughs> if you don't, if you don't want it to be, you know, I don't want to put you on the spot, but the uh, baraka of both of you, inshallah. This me, I mean, you're our elder. No, I do <laughs> رأو المقدوب عليك الغضب ظالم آمين ربنا أتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة ولكن الله ندم أنا بدك ربي بزاتي ما يسوفون والسلام على مسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين آمين 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 Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. <laughs> وَعَلَىٰ آلِهِ حَقَ قَدْرِهِ وَمِدْنُورِ الْعَظِيمِ سُبْحَانَ رَبِّكَ رَبِّ الْعِزَّةِ عَمْ يَسَفُونَ وَالسَّلَامَ الْعَرَبِ السَّلِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَلَمِين
Thank you. Thank you. Bye.